How's everybody? Good. I have time, but because of the length of the uh, BOE, I have time for just a few short questions. Who wants to get us started? Yeah, I'll go first. The um, recreation parks audit, mm -hmm. a long time coming. Some people say this agency hasn't been audited in 30 years. Um, what do you have to say about its findings and the fact that an audit has finally been completed after all this time? So as I said in the Board of Estimates meeting, I was uh, I praised the Department of Audits, thanked them for their diligence. I also uh, praised the Department of Recreation and Parks. I mean, I, I think you will notice they were there. This is not the first time that things have been left undone under previous administrations that my administration made sure that we weren't going to kick the can down the road, that I was going to make sure it happened. So we worked with the Department of Audits and it has been uh, completed. We're also starting to work on the things that have been recommended. There were a lot of things that um, operationally can be tightened up and I um, acknowledged in the Board of Estimates meeting that I was grateful for Director Burkeen's leadership in tightening up those operational things, like I said, that had been um, ongoing for many administrations. We're doing a little story on LLCs and some of the difficulties it creates for the city to find out who are you know, like owners of buildings. Can you just talk just briefly about some of the challenges the city faces in trying to manage these vacancies because of the LLC? So in, in order to strengthen neighborhoods, it's very important that we uh, hold investors, uh, this investors, speculators, and these uh, some, these hard to track down uh, landlords' feet to the fire. And part of my Vegas to Value initiative is doing just that, uh, with uh, making sure that we increase the citation and you know use it multiple times on these uh, people who have uh, properties and who knows where they live, but they they're not Baltimoreans. Uh, they own the, own properties. Some of them have tenants. Some of them just uh, leave them uh, vacant. Uh, and uh, speculators hoping that the uh, the value of the property will increase. It is it is an ongoing challenge. That's why I supported legislation in Annapolis that would make it easier for uh, us to go after uh, these uh, these LLCs. I think LLC reform is needed, and I think it would help us in our efforts to uh, strengthen neighborhoods. As you know, uh, the vacancy value and the blight elimination plan is something that. Um, you know, is is a, a priority of my administration. When I came in the door, there was uh, some proposals on the table that I didn't think were the best for Baltimore. I thought we could do better within the housing department, and I think the the progress that we've made under my administration, with tearing down uh, dilapidated uh, vacants, with um, creating incentives for home ownership, as well as the uh, development, you know, the, with the citations and the work that we're doing in these investment areas uh, throughout our neighborhoods are uh, creating incentive. Millions and millions of dollars in private investment have come from the work that has been done by my, my administration in vacancy value. That's why we've gotten national acclaim. That's why we've gotten international acclaim. So it's not done. Uh, we have we still have a lot of work to do, uh, but I, I do know that the that LLC reform will help us move uh, faster with the with the uh, transformation that we all know is possible in Baltimore's neighborhoods. Madam Mayor, could you ask, uh, may I ask one question regarding the crime fighting initiatives mm -hmm. that were on uh, mm -hmm. today? Just the significance. I know you touched on this briefly yesterday, but. Um, the significance of these initiatives in your So it, it, it's a couple of things in the, in the sense that, you know, until we get the uh, violence reduced, all of the things that I know are possible for Baltimore, that we all know are possible for Baltimore, can't take off as long as we con continue to have persistently high uh, violence in the city and a persistently high homicide rate. Um, I've, you know, the, the, the numbers are clear. We've seen uh, great progress since the beginning of this year. Uh, if you take a look at the, the numbers, they're on um, pace to be less than what we had when in 2011 when the people thought that was as good as it was going to get uh, with the uh, homicide rates under, uh, homicide rate under 200. So we're on pace to, to be lower than that, and that is before the uh, the Operation Ceasefire gets introduced, and it's before uh, some of the surge uh, work that um, that we've been uh, studying and, and we plan to implement. So I think that there's, I, I'm very hopeful, uh, even though um, in, in spite of the, the tragedy uh, that we've experienced recently with the increase in youth violence and the, the homicide of, uh, you know, the 
few of the young guys that have um, been killed in as tragic um, as that is, and it, it, it is, for me, it's so painful as a mom because I know, you know, how much potential this, um, these, uh, these kids have, kids that, you know, have all the promise in the world in their life is, is, is taken. It is, uh, it's a tragedy and it motivates my work, but it, it, as I recognize that, I also have to remain uh, focused and committed uh, to the work because I know that we're making progress. We have reduced the incidence of uh, youth violence, uh, whether they're perpetrators or they're victims. We have made progress, and we have to continue to do the things that we know work. And that's why I, I fought so hard for school construction because I know the, the the longer we can keep kids on the right track, the longer uh, the 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 uh, more. Uh, they will be on track to reach their potential, the less likely they will to uh, be to uh, have any contact with the, the uh, justice uh, system, particularly in juvenile justice and in the adult system. And, you know, when we send our kids to dilapidated schools, you know, it, it's understandable that they don't think school is a valuable experience. That's why I work so hard for that. That's why I work so hard in the, the budget to expand uh, recreation. And we are um, we have a new um, uh, the Cherry Hill Recreation is in the, F, uh, the new larger uh, Cherry Hill Recreation centers in the FY15 budget, and with more to come, mm -hmm. because I know that when we have these opportunities, you know, significant opportunities, we're, we're and provide not just the the infrastructure, but the programs that kids want to want to participate in. We're keeping more kids on the right track. Same thing with the the night hoops basketball. You know, we're looking for ways to invest in young people um, and keep them on the right track, so we don't have to to um, deal with them as offenders or victims of violence. How do you go about identifying these initiatives? Uh, in collaboration with um, you know Deputy Maloney as well as the Commissioner, Mayor's Office. So it's uh, Maloney, Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, and BATS. We have the two thousand dollars for a private attorney for the comptroller mm -hmm. was approved today by the board. Um, you voted for it. Um, why? Uh, why does she need a private attorney? Why can't the solicitor uh, represent her? I, I'm uh, pleased that the controller and the solicitor negotiated in a, a compromise to allow her to get the, the representation that she thinks that she believes. Um, I, I think it's a, it was a decent contract. Uh, the fact of whether uh, why she needs it, I think, is a question that you would have to address to her. Thank you. Thank you.